in traditional African villages, people gathered around a baobab tree, or in the king's court, or in a marketplace, to listen to griots, or jali. Griot is the, the French word uh, that was given to this tradition. Uh, Jaliya is the tradition of passing on um, history and knowledge and information through the power of the word. Power of the word, Niame. Jali is the name of the, the person doing the action. The Jali or the Jali. The art itself is called Jaliya, the art of storytelling. But the, the French called it Griot. And that's the term that most of us are more uh, familiar with. The National Association of Black Storytellers is holding its 34th annual National Conference uh, Storytelling Festival and Conference in Philadelphia this year. That has not happened in 20 years, so that's that's something. It's in a different city every year, and in fact, 20 years ago, when it was in Philadelphia, is when I became a storyteller. Um, I took a class at Temple University, Passet, uh, called Storytelling 101, taught by uh, Carolise Frank Reed, who's now uh, Dr. Frank Reed, uh, and she invited her class to attend this National Storytelling Festival. I went and I observed storytellers, master storytellers from all over the world, and I got hooked, and I've been telling stories ever since. And I asked you about uh, Edwin Mayorga's presentation, I thought it was, it, it's so, I, I can really relate this workshop to what he was talking about. When he was talking about reframing the curriculum so that uh, it includes the, the things going on around us, the things going on uh, in our students' communities so that it includes their lived experiences. And that's one thing that oral history can help do. It is the reason I combine archival research with folklore and oral history. Because many times for African Americans, that is where you're going to find the knowledge or information about us. All of our history cannot at this time be found in the history books because much about us was not documented. It was not documented in the traditional way. But that information is, it is held, it is kept, it is carried from generation to generation <coughs> by using folklore and oral history. And um, I'd like to, um, as one of the one of my favorite ways to, to pass that information on is uh, with hand clap games. Because it is it's something that's so, it's so simple, but it's something that we take for granted. It was also something that slave masters took for granted. They ignored what little children said and did, and they ignored what old people said and did. They thought it was not important. So that was exactly the means we used sometimes to pass on information. Uh, you can bring a, a storyteller to your classroom, your church, your community organization. Uh, there are applications on the website nabsinc.org. N A B S I N C dot O R G. There are also lots of uh, uh, public performances, some of them free. There are concerts, uh, some of them you'll pay for, but there are some free events as well. But Adopt a Teller is so that you can bring a storyteller to your school, 
or organization. Of teaching history and culture when I went into classrooms and I heard these kinds of questions. I heard a, a student say, well, I heard a teacher ask me, you mean there were black people in colonial Philadelphia? I had a student say, uh, when I asked who Martin Luther King was, oh, he freed the slaves. Uh, I heard a historian tell me uh, that it, it, as a historian, it was not his concern how the history of enslavement and other uh, means of oppression affect African Americans today. And it was because of, of these things that I decided to really uh, search in our history and find examples of resistance, resilience, and reciprocity and put them into lessons, you know, tied to, to the curriculum and teach it through storytelling. And I found, ex I would look back into our uh, folklore and find examples of this. There is a hand clap game called Juba. Pat, well, anybody heard, ever heard of Pat and Juba? How about, okay, you all heard of Hamba, right? Okay, all right, some faces lit up in here. If you've never heard of Hambone, raise your hand. Not meaning to put you on the spot. Okay, Hambone, all right. And I'm sure it, uh, once we do this, it, you know, somewhere you'll remember hearing this saying before. Hambone, Hambone, where you been? Round the world and back again. Hambone, Hambone, where's your wife? Out to the kitchen cooking beans and rice. Now, now how many of you have heard that? <laughs> Raise your hand if you've heard that before. Okay, okay. I marched to it. You marched to it? Okay, now. Basic training. <laughs> so now my mama and my grandmama are real good at doing hand bone. I'm not so good at hand bone. Hand bone is when you slap at various parts of your body to make different sounds. Okay, now I'm not so good at hand bone, but I can pat you. So I'll teach you how to pat Juba, but more importantly, I'm going to tell you what I learned about the, the background of this hand clap game and where it came from. Like I said earlier, this is the means we use to pass on important information. So, the, um, the enslaved folks would raise the hall, kill the hall, Cook the hog. But did they get to eat that hog? Did they get to eat that hog? No. no. The master's family got to eat that hog. But sometimes the master would just throw them a hand bomb. Say, hey, y'all can have that. But the Africans would take that hand bomb and put it in a little bit of water. I put it in a pot of water and make a little bit of this put in a little bit of this and a little bit of that and make the best pot of soup you ever did taste. Mm. Then they would take that same ham bone give it to their neighbor. And their neighbor would put in a little bit of this mm. and a little bit of that and make another pot of soup. Mm. That's where the saying came from. Ham bone, ham bone, where you been? Round the world and back again. Ham bone, ham bone, where's your wife? Out to the kitchen cooking beans and rice. Mm. And then later, in different parts of the country, that uh, juba, juba means a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And this song came out of uh, New Orleans. Juba this, juba that, juba, juba for the yellow cat, juba for my mama, juba for my pop, juba for my brother-in-law. Now this is where y'all have to help me. Because I, I get the, the words of this one mixed up a little bit. I grow the corn, you give me the husk. Right, husk. I grow the corn, you give me the husk. I bake the bread, you give me the crust. I cook the meat, you give me the skin. And that's where my mama's trouble begins. 
Juba this, Juba that. Okay, so now I'm going to teach you how to pat Juba. Put your pens down. Hold your hands out in front of you. Now, because of the, oh, okay, I didn't think of this, this kind of desk. You're going to either have to turn to the side or stand up because you got to hit your laps. Okay, sorry I didn't realize these work. I can't push, push your desk back. Okay, quickly now, quickly. Juba this. Okay, you ready? Hands out in front. Drop them to your left to your slap. When you raise them up, one hand's on the bottom. The hand on the bottom, hit your thigh first, then the other hand. When you raise them up, the other hand's on the bottom. Okay, this is that simple, right? Very simple. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, this is the easy part. The hard part is to do this while you sing the tune. Juba this, juba that. Juba's for the yellow cat. Juba for my pa, juba for my ma, juba for my brother-in-law, juba up, juba down, juba all around the town, juba jump, juba sing, juba cut the pigeon wing, and then they would say, I do do what? I grow the corn, you give me the husk. I bake the bread, you give me the crust. I cook the meat. You give me the skin, and that's where my mama trouble began. So the children were making fun of the so-called slave masters without their even realizing it. So go to NABS and to join National Association of Black Storytellers. Thank you so much. I'm finding so many, many, so many different, mentality different mentality today. It seems hard. It seems, hard. Hard. It seems, it seems challenging. challenging. I don't say it's hard because the only thing hard, hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a else challenge. Is a challenge. Um, um. So, so. so.